Hello, everybody. I'm Julie Ostro, humorous speaker and communication coach. I'm here to give you some tips on public speaking, and most importantly, from using Zoom or any other web platform. Now more than ever is the time for you to become more comfortable with giving a presentation, giving, um, taking the lead on a meeting, and because now, since we're in the middle of this stay-at-home order, uh, across many states and also possibly quarantined, it's very possible that you are conducting so many meetings in business and team gatherings via Zoom or any other web platform. And I would like you to take a few minutes to listen and take in some of these tips that I have for you. It's important to find the funny in what you're doing and also take this opportunity now that you are working from home and you're in the comforts of your home office to hone some of those public speaking skills that you have. So I would like you to, to ask yourself, what comfortability do you have with public speaking? Whenever your manager or someone would volunteer or ask or volunteer you or ask you to speak at an event, in a meeting, or even at the, the company end of the year meeting, do you get nervous? Do you shake in your boots? Now's the time for you to practice those skills. And what's different between speaking in person and speaking on a Zoom call or a webinar is that you can't see people's facial expressions. You don't know if people are getting what you're saying. So this is an opportunity for you to hone your presentation in a whole new light without an audience, without people giving you the nod of, oh yes, I understand what she's saying. And uh, without that facial expression of, oh yeah, I get what she's saying, or I have no idea what she's talking about. You have to rely on your own gauge, your own um, insight as to whether you're getting your point across. And that's why it's important for you to organize your thoughts more than ever. And I have some tips for you today about presenting with confidence, stepping out of your comfort zone to explore this new platform of, well, might be new for you, that's why I'm using new, new platform of giving a presentation, and, and to honestly assess how you feel about giving a presentation or leading a, a talk through, uh, through Zoom or any other web platforms. And now's the time to be honest with yourself about any fears that you have. And it's okay to have fears about public speaking. You might have heard that throughout the years, there have been studies done about how people fear public speaking more than they fear their own death. Now think about that. People have fear public speaking more than they fear their own death. And it's not ludicrous. It is not absurd for you to feel the same way. I recently read an article that substantiated that, um, also in Psychology Today, about how way, way, way back in the caveman days, that if, let's say, a hunter or anybody else in, in the tribe did something wrong, um, I'm not sure what, if they did something wrong, they would be ostracized from the tribe and then left to fend for themselves, and therefore, possibly, they wouldn't survive. Think about how, when you have given a presentation, did you feel like you were going to be ostracized? Did you feel like you were going to be left out to survive on your own and maybe you had this fear of failure? I've had that feeling. Years ago when I was in Toastmasters, when I was giving one of my speeches and I felt like I was bombing. The reason I wasn't doing well at all. And maybe looking back, I could ask the people who I worked with who were also a part of that club and they, and they would probably say, oh no, it was fine. But it was so many years ago, but I remember that I tripped on my words, I apologized, I got nervous, and I was so incredibly, incredibly embarrassed because the people in that Toastmasters club were also people I worked with. And I had this fear that people were going to see me then right after lunch and look at me and laugh and point that, oh, she goofed her presentation. So and then after reading that article in, the, in Psychology Today, something clicked because I thought, oh, that makes sense. Probably subconsciously I thought, if I can't give a presentation, then there's no way that my 
manager or director of the department will consider me for a leadership position or promote me, maybe they'll even fire me, thereby leaving me out to fend for myself. Do you, so you see way, it, it's in our genes that we've been afraid of giving a presentation. Well, let's, let's get back into the present moment. And that is you have to think about what you have accomplished in your life, what challenges you have had in your life and how you have pushed through those and you've made yourself a success. Think about that in public speaking. How can that be applied to giving a presentation? So face your fears. And is it a real fear? Is it honest to goodness? Are you afraid of failure? Well, there are so many tools that you can use to um, combat that in getting in um, a proper mindset of, I know what I'm talking about. And if somebody asks me a question, I don't have to run off stage in fear. I don't have to quit. I don't have to think of myself as a failure if I don't know the answer to that question. Someone asks you a question, for example, you don't know the answer. That's when you can say, thank you for your question. Let's open up to uh, the room for discussion because I'm not quite sure if I have that information readily available, but let's turn that into a conversation. So that, that can get into a whole other topic about being prepared for the unexpected. But let's get back, I want to get myself back on track about how you can be an effective communicator in your meetings and or if you're giving a presentation through Zoom. First and foremost, it's important for you to maintain good eye contact. And what you don't want to do is be um, looking at your notes here because then all you see right now is close to the top of my head and I'm not making eye contact with you. And so the minute I look away, I, I've lost you, right? But if I'm looking at the camera, I'm looking at you. But you might ask, well, how do, I, how do I not look at myself at the camera? I mean, at the screen, it does take practice. I've seen people post pictures of their loved one right near the camera. I have something fun right near my, the camera hole. Would you like to see it? Okay. Hold on, it's going to get weird for a second because I'm going to move closer to the camera so you can see it. This, this is what I have right above the camera screen. So it's, it's lodged right here and I see a smile. So it's, it's making sure that I smile too, it, him, or I don't have a name for this guy yet. So there we go. So I'm looking right at you and I'm looking at a, a smiley guy to help me uh, remember to smile. So that, eye contact, and also make sure that you don't have a whole lot of distractions around you. Make sure your phone is turned off. Pretend like you are giving a presentation where other people are in the room. They wouldn't want to see you looking at your phone. And when, you're, when you are leading an online meeting, it is very tempting to look, say, in the corner to people's comments. And what you can do, if you do have to look at people's comments, let's say you've said, okay, this is going to be an interactive meeting and, and you have to then say, look in the corner for people's comments. People on the other, other side of the world from you can't see what you're looking at, obviously. So I think it's okay for you to look, but tell your audience what you're going to do. This, as I, here's an example. I mentioned this is going to be an interactive act. Um, um, this is going to be an interactive session. So you will see me looking over here for some comments because what you don't want to do is look over here and here. And then it just, so you can't see my screen, but what you do see is me just looking all over the place. So you want to avoid that. So when you are looking at people's comments, it's more than okay to say, hey, or even make a joke out of it. Say, hey, you guys, you might notice I'm not going to make eye contact with you for a little bit because I'm going to look right over here for some comments. And make you, making sure that everyone um, has an opportunity to put their comments in, in the field. Now, if you, are, if you do have a coworker who is helping you manage this discussion, you can make him or her uh, a co-host and that person could manage the comments. So that's another option there. And this is, here are some tips now for organizing your thoughts and preparing for your presentation or leading a meeting. This can be applied online and also in person. What I would like you to do is remember 
not to memorize what you're going to be saying. Because if you memorize and then you're going to just dictate everything that you've said, it is not going to come across as natural or interactive. I'm going to show you what it looks like if I've memorized something. It could sound like this. I have, would have the tendency to talk more in a monotone voice because I'm thinking about what I memorized from what I wrote down here on my piece of paper. And then your eyes might get a little glazy and stare. So you don't want to do that. What I do want you to do instead, if you want to write your whole presentation out, that's fine. So let's say you write or type your whole presentation, then go in and highlight, whether manually or highlight within the Word document, those key words that you're going to be using and talking about during your talk. Then making sure that you have an intro, the keywords that you're going to talk about, and your summary. And within your whole discussion, I want you to make sure that you're asking your audience questions or team members questions. So if you were to outline or excuse me, say what your intro is, what you're going to talk about, and then da -da 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 say everything, and then outro summary by, you probably lost everybody halfway through. So this is what I want you to continue to do. So adding on to, to that uh, format that I'm suggesting is write out your whole presentation, find the keywords, and then write your intro for your, your talk, write down your three to five bullet points, and have space in there because that's when you're going to ask questions. Think about throughout your talk or your meeting when you would like to hear from somebody. And that's when you can say, you know what, I, since we talked about, um, let's see what would be an example. Since, since I just went through the numbers for first quarter, I would like to hear from, from some other team members. What have you been um, experiencing in the last couple of weeks as far as meeting your goals? Something to that effect. So be sure that you ask at least one question to gain interaction after each bullet point. And then you can, in addition to that, you can have a Q&A at the end. And make sure that you have you. so now, um, so to recap that, to be clear, write out your presentation, provide your bullet points, um, I mean, highlight your, your key points, and then write out or type your outline, which includes your intro, three to five key points, and then your outro, and leave space to ask questions, and a Q&A at the end. If you have any questions about how to do this, or if you have thoughts about uh, what you're doing now, if it works, if you want any tweaks, my contact information will be at the end of this video. Julie Ostro, O-S-T-R-O-W, your humorous speaker and communication coach. You can do this, and this is the perfect opportunity to practice your public speaking skills right in the comfort of your own home. You've got this. Stay strong. Thanks for listening today.